Today, we install this RGB board from Lord Voltar on this scruffy looking Duo R. I'll show you the steps I took to mod this PC Engine Duo R and give you some tips, the pros and cons of this mod, and my final thought. If you stick around to the end of the video, I have something special for all you PC Engine fans out there. So without further ado, let's get scruffy looking. Here's the list of the tools and parts you'll need for today's PC Engine RGB mod. This is probably the most important tool you're going to need for this job, the Torx Size 10 Security Screwdriver, because without it, you're going to have a tough time getting this thing open. I got mine as a set that came with a bunch of other bits with it. If you don't already have one like this, I suggest picking one up because they come in very handy. It's always good to have the right tools for the job. We're going to open her up. By the way, there are five of these security screws you'll need located here. When opening up the case, you want to make sure to open it up to the right side. So slowly open it up to this side and pull out this plug. Next, pull out these three plugs. Then you'll free up the drive from the main board, so just set it aside. That's right, R2. Be incredibly cautious of these pegs marked in yellow. They're thin and fragile. We must be cautious. Now we're left with five Phillips screws to remove from the main board. This is the Duo R's main board in all its glory. Here is the processing chip that we'll be dealing with today. This is the five pin DIN female connector we'll be replacing and the pair of SMD caps we'll also be replacing to give us jail bar free gaming. This is the female nine pin DIN connector we will be using to grab our R, G, and B and C-Sync from the board. This old female five pin DIN doesn't have enough lines out for our RGB needs, so we'll be replacing her. You are reckless. Well, reckless or not, we need to do some modification to get this new DIN seated in the board correctly. So get out your solder of choice and warm up your iron. First, just adding a little solder to get rid of the old solder. It's a Lord Voltar tip. Isn't that right, Lord Voltar? You have done well. Okay, get out your desoldering gun if you got one, or just use some desoldering wick instead. It's up to you, and what kind of resources you may have lying around. I fumbled up and somehow clogged up my desoldering gun, so I ended up using desoldering braid anyway. After the via appear to be free of solder, check the pins with some tweezers to see if they're indeed loose. Okay, there are a few stubborn ones here, so let's coax them out nice and easy. Just like that. Right, Lord Voltar? You have done well. Okay, here we have an old din, and the new DIN side by side. We want to keep the orange marked prongs from the old DIN and insert them into the new DIN. Also, we need to remove the two prongs marked in yellow from the new DIN because they don't match up with the vias on the board. Then all the prongs on the new DIN marked in red, we're going to cut just enough so they're not protruding past the black plastic retainer. Before we can do all this, first we need to remove the bottom black retainer plastic so take out a thin flathead screwdriver and gently pry either side of the black retainer off. And we're just going to snip the four prongs marked in red. But as you can see, this middle prong, it doesn't protrude like it should. I goofed and snipped a prong I wasn't supposed to, but I was able to sink some solder inside and make the joint solid anyways. This V on the right is no mistake. It should not have any solder there, so we don't have to cut any traces on the motherboard. Now let's flip her over again and add some flux to the pins we'll be working on today. We have the main processing chip and the C6260 where we'll be pulling the R, G, B, and C sync signals from. So let's knock the dust off these pins and add a touch of new solder so our ribbon cable will have something to grab onto. Now let's prep the ribbon cable. Get your wire strippers out and get to work. This is probably one of the most time consuming parts of this mod. It is crucial to take time to trim your wires to size so you get the most direct line to their vias. The less cable, the less chance for interference. Isn't that right, my lord? You have done well. Strip, tin, snip and solder them into place. Okay, there's C-Sync, G, B, and R, 
And now we should prep our RGB board. We have to add a little bit of solder to each of these joints here. Now that the board is nice and wet, two little wires here gave me the most trouble. I might prefer to use some resistor legs instead next time. These really short wires gave me a headache. Just connect the ground and the five volts from the chip to the RGB board like so. And now we have to tame this ribbon cable. You know the routine by now. Snip, strip, tin and clip. Then we solder them into place. Now rotate the whole board 180 degrees. And we'll put the last set of wires in this mod for the RGB board to the brand new DIN we soldered in place earlier. More cable management and here we go. First solder them to the RGB board. Then we solder them to the new DIN like so. You all know the routine by now, I'm sure. Just solder all the wires in place and we are pretty much done here. That's our board successfully soldered into place. Take a step back and admire your handiwork. I probably could have made these wires a little bit shorter, but I think we did good. Now let's snap her back together real quick and see how she performs. You know, sometimes I impress even myself. I don't know where you get your delusions, laser brain. Just some cosmetic finishing touches. What do you think about my purple accents with this new buttons and, and this clear cue card door? Let me know down in the comments. And stick around to the end of the video because I'll show you how you can score your own set of buttons for your Duo R and or your PC Engine controllers. Let's talk about the install. This was fairly straightforward to install. The most difficult part about this was the cable management. If you're new to soldering, especially soldering ribbon cable, get some practice in before you start this one. The other difficult part is soldering the cables to the tiny pins on the board. It took me a few times to get everything seated just right. One other thing to mention is when attempting to strip the cables while attached to the chip on one end, I accidentally pulled the wires off the chip and had to remake a whole new wire. So take your time and pre-strip them to save yourself from hitting. But I really like the red board on this one. I wish this PC engine had a clear top so we could show it off. The board itself couldn't be more easy to understand. It's clearly labeled, compact, and fits snugly right on top of the CPU. As for how this board performs, the colors are incredibly vivid and the pixels look perfectly marvelous. Here is a side-by-side -side performance comparison between an unmodded system with composite and an RGB modded system. You can see how much clearer the pixels are in the RGB. Definitely more vivid. Composite version has a lot of static and noise and is much more washed out. I don't know why, but uh, it appears very yellowed in the RGB. I've heard in some places the PC Engine RGB mod is a little bit oversaturated, but it's still much better than the noisy composite. Maybe in the future we'll see some palette switch type abilities, but hands down, night and day compared to the composite. RGB is well worth the effort, in my opinion. Additionally, I replaced the jail bar caps on the back of the board, but I didn't see a whole lot of jail bars to begin with, so it's something you might not need to replace, but I went ahead and did it anyway since I went to the lengths of buying the jail bar cap option. Here's my setup for capturing today's gameplay. And here are my thoughts. This board is well worth its weight in gold. It's well designed and straightforward to install. And the results are well worth the effort to go from composite video to gorgeous RGB. This is a must have for any PC Engine enthusiast. It's small, straightforward, definitely very affordable, and I just think it's a great mod. The downside is that it's difficult to solder to the board. The only way this could get any better if it was a plug and play off, but I'm not holding my breath for that. Probably you need to have at least a little confidence in soldering for this mod. I wouldn't suggest it for a beginner, but I'll say it was much easier to perform than an NES RGB for sure. This mod gets two thumbs up in my book. If you love your PC engine, you'll love this RGB mod by Lord Volta.
Avatar. And you can play your PC Engine library in the best possible way in RGB. As promised, for those PC Engine fans out there that have stuck around to the end of the video, I've made some very limited edition run of red, green, and blue button sets for the original PC Engine controllers as well as the PC Engine Duo R itself, both power and eject buttons. If you're interested in purchasing a set, please go ahead and contact me by DM on my Instagram or Twitter account. They're both linked in the description below. If you don't have either, you can send me an email at scruffylookingrgb at gmail.com and let me know what color you're interested in. At the moment, I only have a very limited amount, but I do plan on producing more in the near future. Understand that shipping may take longer than expected, and not all locations may accept packages from Japan. So please check your local post office before inquiring. These are not perfect by any means, and may have slight imperfections here and there. But hey, who's scruffy looking? That's right. And I'll be coming out with new colors from time to time. Otherwise, I'd like to know what your favorite PC Engine games are. What games would you like to see in RGB? Do you have any suggestions for me? If you'd like to see some more modding from Scruffy Looking RGB, click the card in the end screen. Or if you'd like to see more hunting, go ahead and click the corresponding card for that. Thank you all for hanging out with me today. I hope you all stay safe out there, but above all, stay Scruffy Looking. Who's Scruffy Looking?